you know, we're going to try to keep this as, uh, as a good discussion. I know Tony always tells me we don't uh, don't talk too long and make sure you're you're around to take a lot of different questions. Uh, just want to share with you. Obviously, there's uh, there's so many issues. I mean, as I just walked around and you know, people were sharing with me some of their concerns. There's so many issues that have people on edge in America today. Uh, they're, they're concerned about. Uh, just recently, of course, with what's going on in the Middle East and Iran and this deal in Iran, they're concerned about our, our, our own safety and security here in America and, and particularly the issues at the border and, and, and illegal immigration and immigration in general in America. They're concerned about jobs and the prospects of America being a healthy country economically that's going to provide real opportunities for people. They're concerned about our, our religious liberty and what, what happened with the Supreme Court that is that is uh, really abused this authority and, and what that means. Uh, if you think about it, almost you know, there's almost every aspect of American life. People are concerned about whether this country, as Tony said, uh, is uh, is the country that you're that you had the opportunity to live in, prosper and whether you're going to pass that same country on to the next generation. Uh, in 2012, I used to go around and say, America is changing. I think we can make the argument actually pretty convincingly that America has changed. When I said this was the most important election of our lifetime, as I did when I came here, I said, it's the most important election of your lifetime. we got to get it right, and we didn't. We didn't get it right. We didn't get it right uh, in, uh, in 2012. And I would say one of the reasons is, and I'm just going to speak now as Republicans, is because too many people deferred their judgment to the experts as to who our candidate should be. And if there's one thing I would caution you, whenever you turn on a television, including Fox News, and particularly Fox News, because they drive this as much as anything, and that is, when you hear the term electable, turn the TV off, and disregard everything that's said afterwards. Right? Because I don't know whether you know this or not, but the last two nominees of the Republican Party were the most electable. Maybe they don't know what electable means. Because electable means you're supposed to win. And they didn't win. They didn't win because they aren't, the, because believe it or not, the one that's the most status quo, the one that's the most moderate and supportive of what's going on in Washington, is no longer the most elected. And if you want, and people ask you, well, you know, they want to ask you about Donald Trump. All I can tell you is this: if if there's any question out there in America, whether America's had enough of what we've been getting out of Washington and New York and the and and. And the, and the way things are run in this country, all you need to do is look at what's happening with, uh, with Donald Trump. Because, let's just be honest, I mean, if you look at what Donald Trump is for, it's not necessarily things that most people in this room are for. But what he's tapping into is, is someone who's willing to go down there and just kick a little fan, right? And just say, we want to we do things differently. And I just would, would encourage you to keep that attitude about making sure that we have someone in this race who can do just that, but also look at what they actually want to kick, right? So it's not just saying, you know, we're going to get tough, but actually look what they want to do. Because I, I, I've seen far too often people who are very, very glib and, and say a lot of wonderful things, but when you get down to it, they aren't exactly what you thought they were. How many times has that happened in America? We elected someone that we actually thought was going to do something and they went to Washington and did something else. Well, we've got to be very careful about that as Republicans, particularly you folks, because you are, as I always refer to Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, the human resources department for the, for the public, for the rest of America. You're going to do the job interviews. Well, you know this because a lot of you are from other states. If you're from Pennsylvania or New York, California, you don't see presidential candidates unless you're paying to see it. Because they're going, they're going there for fundraising. They're not going there to campaign. In South Carolina, you get a chance to see these candidates. I'm sure, Tony, you're going to have several candidates come through here. And you're going to have the opportunity to see them and kick the tires, get a chance to, to know them. One of the reasons I believe we did as well as we did and 
in the last election is because you know I went 385 town hall meetings in the state of Iowa. I went to every county and and people got to know me. People got to see me, got a, got a chance, an opportunity to, to, to evaluate it, and that made all the difference. And we're going to go through that process again this time because we're going to be matched up against a whole other group of folks. And one of the things I realized uh, in this election is that I feel like a, uh, I'm, in a, I'm in a car dealership and I'm a car. <laughs> Not a very nice car. <laughs> Very sturdy, reliable car, right? But I'm like, I'm like, uh, honest. Thank you. Anybody else? I mean, no. uh, so, but I'm like, if I'm a suburban, all right? Right? Now it's, it's you know, 2016 suburban, so it's a new suburban. I mean, it's 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 got all the right issues, all the right things. That, but you know, everybody knows what a suburban is, and and there's all these other new models out there on the floor, on the showroom floor that that, that are brand new. Brand new, you know, right out of right out of the uh, uh, right out of the you know whatever the, the the research labs, whatever. And everybody wants to take a test drive in all these new models, and and they sort of know the suburban. We'll just sort of set you over here for now because we've got to look at all these other folks. And I get that, uh, but in the end, I'm hopeful that Republicans will do what they what they've always done, which is. Uh, try to focus on who they think is the best person to, to, to get them where they want to go. And, and I believe if you look at all of the issues that are important in this country to Americans, and you look at who's set up to be able to do the things that are necessary to win, and what is that? Number one, you better be a good communicator. If you go back to the times of when we had uh, television became the primary motive or media became the primary mode of elected a candidate and that's really the 1970s when it became the dominant way of, of, of communicating to the public what have we learned every election the best communicator is one every single one Republican never had done matter the best communicator has, has won the election and now we have an advantage because we're going up against Hillary Clinton okay? <laughs> not exactly stellar <laughs> But we better be good. We better have someone who can really connect with the American vote. And so that would be one, that would be one, I'm just giving you sort of as, as folks who are in the human resources department here, I'm trying to give you an idea of what you need to be looking at and evaluating these candidates. And one is an effective communicator. Number two, right, is do they appeal to the voting blocks that we need in order to win the election, right? The Democratic Party has become the party of special interest. I mean, that's always what they've been, but even more so today. They have their blocks of voters that they're going to appeal to. Well, the Republican Party is less like that. I mean, we don't have all these little special interests that drive the Republican Party. We're much more of a, of a flat type of a party and have very different interests. Not, you know, the Democrats, it's, uh, it's minorities, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's labor unions, you know, it's the environmentalists. That's who runs the Democratic Party. We're not like that. But we need, we have to have a candidate who can reach out to the voter groups that are going to decide this election. And I believe if you look at all the voter trends from the last couple elections, there's a group of voters out there in key swing states that have stayed home or not voted for us in near the percentage that they should have. And it's not who some candidates say, oh, we just got to get our conservative vote out. They're talking like Democrats. Yeah, we need to do that, but if you look at our voter turnout, it's actually been pretty good compared to the Democrats and their base. The problem we had is there's a large group of voters out there that are up for grabs that we haven't got. And those are lower, moderate income, what I call blue collar workers. And primarily through, <coughs> the, uh, uh, through the industrial belt of America. We run from Pennsylvania all the way through to Iowa. If you look at all the analysis that's done, those are the voters who stayed home or when they came out to vote, didn't want to vote for Obama but couldn't vote for our candidate. In fact, there was a survey done in the last election on exit polls. When they asked the question, what's the most important issue for you? 23% of the electorate, almost all lower and middle income, working people, not rich or work, workers, 23%, a big chunk of them, these workers that I'm talking about, almost all of them, said their most important issue was 
Does he care about people like me? And you say, well, that's not a very good reason to vote for president. My response is, why not? Don't, want, don't you want a president who thinks, if you're going through the tough times that you're going through, don't you want someone who's leading the country who knows the tough times you're going through and is going to try to do something to help you? Why is that not a good thing to, 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 to vote for president? It is a good reason to vote for president. The problem is, our candidate got 19% of those votes. The other guy got 81%. You want to know why one is concentrated in the communities that I just talked about, states I just talked about? Swing states, Ohio, Indiana, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Iowa.